Hello everyone, General Apple here and welcome back to another house in Fata Morgana video. And on our last playthrough, we reached a point where Jacopo and Morgana just started to bond, which was amazing because we got to see one of the most beautiful pictures we've seen in this game and the previous one. And I know I spoke about it a lot on the last episode, so, <laughs> you know, it's just incredible. It was too good. Hopefully there will be plenty of more of these moments to come. But yeah, let's just continue right where we left off. Because we kind of left it at a point where, you know, it just started to get good. So, let's continue. And hopefully it will get better. Which I'm sure it will. Morgana. My whole body is all slimy. After the slave men left, I retreated to a corner of the room. Sat down and pulled my knees up to my chest. Through the walls, I could hear men and women sinning, so I plugged my ears in an attempt to block out the vile noise. It was filthy here, and if I remained in this place too long, it would probably taint my soul. I need to get out as soon as possible, but I couldn't bring myself to leave. My body refused to cooperate. Just thinking about going out there into the slums, all alone, sent uncontrollable shivers down my spine. I was the daughter of God. What did I have to fear? Such worldly motions were unbefitting of a saint. I was pitiful, pathetic, and I hated it. I have nothing to fear. God will always lead his saint to where he needs her most. And as long as I continue performing miracle, people will acknowledge me as the true daughter of God. I have nothing to fear. Barnier, you're a damned witch wearing a saint's skin. Ah, uh, will they though? Will anyone look at me and see a saint? I can hardly see a saint in this face. The Lord and his guests with their revulsion, their fear. That was the appropriate reaction. I was repulsive. Not something to be welcomed with open arms. Saints and angels were always spoken as beautiful. Well, demons and witches were spoken of as hideous. Any miracles I performed would be seen as the work of the devil, not God. But it didn't matter. It was my sacred duty to offer a helping hand to anyone in need, no matter how much persecution I suffered for it. My heart was resolute, but my head is all muddled. I can't stand this. One day, I'll show you the world. And thinking about a slave man only made an even bigger mess inside my head. It wasn't all unpleasant though. He didn't push me away because how, of how I looked. He treated me like an ordinary girl. Not a witch, and not a saint either. And besides, I was being disrespectful. I know that. He was well within his rights to be angry. He could have let me go, but he didn't. He got angry, but he told me to stay. Put ointment on me. Smiled, even. A very curious man, indeed. And then, there was what he had said about his homeland. Just because my name reminded him of where he came from didn't mean I came from there as well. Never mind that nonsense about sharing ancestors. I had no bloodline to trace back. My mother had conceived me without knowing man. And my father resided in the heavens above, the Lord God. The very idea that we shared blood was absurd, and yet, what if, somewhere on this earth, there are people who share my blood, who feel what I do, who think what I think, who see the world the same as me? What if somewhere like that really exists? That would be very, so very... So very what? And time flows even... Ah, oh, no, I can't read it in time. Oh. Seems like we're at the cemetery. There she is. An early summer breeze blew past, rustling vivid green leaves. With a pleasantly warm wind at my back, I entered a graveyard. Anyone who ha wasn't from around here would probably have thought it nothing more than a curious arrangement of stones on an abandoned plot of land, though. No one knew the names of most of those buried, buried here and they probably died without, a without anyone by their sides. In death, though, they finally found themselves with someone to give them attention, to show them love. 
love in the form of a prayer for the repose of their souls. And on this abandoned plot of land, Nelt is de facto caretaker, a young girl and the only person who paid the dead who lay here any mind. Oh, it's Morgana? She's too deep in a prayer. I guess I'll have to wait. It had been a little under two and a half years since I had rescued Morgana from the Lord Manor. Much to my chagrin, she was still firm from anything that would, could be described as opening up, but she wasn't quite as distant as before, from my perspective at least. She had stopped calling the girls at the brothel vile and impure, and she was even somewhat conversational. Sometimes. It seems to me her trauma had loosened its grip on her, if only a little. Of course, she had a tendency to be on the brutally blunt side, which became more obvious as she started talking more. And I felt like the brutal part was getting more prominent every day, though I suppose it was a good sign. Better than her refusing to interact at all, at least. Probably. She had also, most notably, began showing signs of independence burying and sending off the dead who had no family or loved ones to do it for them was one such activity she had taken on living in the slums it was hardly uncommon to see corpses abandoned in alleyways or on the side of the road generally speaking they would be tossed off into a ditch somewhere out of the way to rot but over the past couple of years that had stopped happening because morgana had taken it on herself to give them proper burials and gravestone Nothing fancy, just a plain slab of rock to mark the grave, but it certainly seemed much more respectable than the alternative. Every day, she came out to the graveyard to pray for the departed. She had always seemed a bit abnormally pious, but there was something almost frightening about her dedication to the task. She was only 9 years old at the time of the slave revolt, which made her 11 now. And rather than play with other children her age, she collected abandoned corpses in the slum and brought them here to bury and pray for. Abnormal didn't even begin to describe it. Some time ago I asked her, why don't you go out and play like the other children? To which she calmly responded, I could not possibly waste my time idly engaging in worldly recreation. I knew that God was the most important figure in her life, but it still seemed excessive. Not even a covenant was that draconian. I made numerous attempts to warm her up, but they all fell flat. Nothing I said seemed to make it through the heavy wall she had built around herself. And that was how Morgana acted around me and the girls at the brothel, those closest to her. The rest of town could hardly get within shouting distance before being shut down. Although, it wasn't like they tried either. Most everyone else activity actively distanced themselves from her. On some level, they appreciated her taking care of the bodies that showed up, but ultimately, to them she was little more than a spider that had captured more dangerous insects begrudgingly left to its own devices. Hardly anyone found her pleasant, and they didn't hide it either. But not just because of her choice in hobbies. The biggest factor was, of course... Yeah, I guess her face? May your soul find eternal peace. The disquieting marsh covering her face. You all done? I didn't realize you were there. Been here for a little while now. You should really pay more attention to your surroundings. This isn't exactly the safest area. Why bother? No one is going to do anything to me. Maybe not now, but a few years down the line, that's a whole nother story. You should get in the habit early. You're a growing girl and your face could very well be better by then too. Never mind the fact that there are people out there who'll take anything as long as it's got girl parts. Oh, that's rough. What if one of them decides to target you? Appalling. Aren't they? Which is, which is why you should be a little more careful. You're an appalling man. <laughs> why am I appalling? Because the thought crossed your mind. I did- it did not. I'm just saying there are people out there who think like that and you need to look out for yourself. The fact that you would say that at all is appalling. I'm just looking out for you. Oh lord, may the sinful man be cast down to hell where he belongs. Jeez, you know no mercy, do you? I feel like you treat these corpses nice 
<laughs> nicer than you do me. You'd be correct. If you want me to be nice to you, go die. <laughs> oh man, she has no chill. The girl has has got no mercy. Anyway, if you're done praying, get over here. It's ointment time. <laughs> Come on, man, it's ointment time. Oh god. How many times must I tell you? You're wasting your time. Don't be such a pessimist. Rome wasn't built in a day, and there are still other ointments we haven't tried. I'm not being pessimistic, I just... Then unless you want to stay looking like that, what do you have to lose? Come on, off with the hood. You are a very stubborn man. Pot, kettle. True. Ha, huh, call me whatever you want. Nothing you can say will bother me in the slightest. I loathe you. What? You were saying? Oh, she's smiling. She actually smiling. We got we got a bit of a cackle out of her. A bit of a cracked smile. You're kidding, right? Partially. You little. I thought you were going to apply the ointment. What are you waiting for? I sighed and gave her a little. Gl a little glower, then scooped up some of the ointment with my fingers. Morgana angled her face towards the floor, closed her eyes, and waited for me to begin. There was an element within the gang that gave me flack for all the time I spent looking after and caring for Morgana. Well, it was mostly just Gretchen, actually. If I were you, I would have tossed that ungrateful brat out, of her, <laughs> out on her ass years ago. Would be another story if she were a looker, of course. And to a degree, I understood where he was coming from. I certainly would have appreciated a little gratitude. On the other hand, all the time I spent with her, even if it was largely being verbally abused, allowed me to notice the more subtle changes in her mannerism. And seeing that growth, however small, was one of the things that motivated me to keep at it. For example, a year ago, whenever I went to make physical contact with her, I would have to verbally reassure her I had no intention to do her any harm or she would likely start shouting, shouting. And even if she didn't, she would sit there the whole time I applied ointment incredibly stiff. Now she was more relaxed. I could even sense some sort of trust emanating from within her as my fingers rubbed against her skin. It wasn't my imagination. At least I didn't think it was. It was something only perceptible through the act of making direct physical contact. That said, she is, is still borderline ins inscrutable. As I massaged the ointment into her skin, I traced the outline of her face with the flat of my tongue. She, the vast majority of her face was discolored, and in places, patches had festered and fallen off. Oh, the skin at the corners of her lips was shriveled and curled up, which I could only imagine was fairly painful. It was a rough and uneven, hardly a pleasant sensation and a far cry from the clean, smooth skin most girls her age would have. Maybe she's right. You think it would show some sign of healing by now, if it were ever going to... Despite my constant insistence that she stay optimistic, it was probably me who was, the, who was most disappointed, most frustrated, that a complete lack of improvement. The ointment wasn't cheap, to be sure, but I didn't give a damn about the money. It was the sense of hopelessness that got me, that it was all for nothing. Back when it first took her in, Maria had suggested the marks on Morgana's face might be manifestation of something psychological or emotional, and I was beginning to think she was right. That wasn't going to stop me from trying though. This was the only thing I could think of to do for her. I wonder, what she looked like when she's all healed? Maybe she'll smile for once. I'd like to see that, someday. Hello? Is anyone in there? Huh? You need something? Oh, sorry, I got lost in my thoughts. I didn't realize I had stopped. Lost in your thought? That sounds positively dreadful. <laughs> what that supposed to mean? I was just thinking about what you... What I... What? Never mind. Finishing that, that's just beginning for another round of derision. That's not why I want to get your attention either way. Hmm? What happened there? Where? Your arm. It's cut. Morgana pointed to a gash peeking out from beneath my sleeve. 
Well, it wasn't very deep wound. It was hardly a mere scratch either. Oh yeah, that's uh, you know, I decided do not. Know. I decidedly do not know. It's not important. Don't worry about it. Use that on yourself. Huh? The ointment. Stop wasting it on my face, which is never going to heal, and use it on yourself. N no, you need to get so you no need to get so worked up about it, Morgana. I'm not worked up. I'm simply expressing my discontent at your foolishness. Which was what, what I'm pretty sure is the definition of being worked up. Regardless, don't use any more ointment on me. Use it on yourself. I'm sure it will I, I, it will appreciate actually being useful for now, for once. Last I checked, medicine doesn't have feelings. <laughs> really, it's not that bad. And besides, I'm only going to get more, so what's the difference? You're going to get more? And what are you going- you, what are you doing that would make you say that? Uh, yeah, I'm, uh, too sinful to admit? You're an abhorrent, man. No, I swear, it's nothing bad. You win, you win, I'll tell you. I was hoping to keep it a secret. I am, uh, doing a little training. Training? Yeah, crime and unrest has been on the rise in the slums. Or, well, not just the slums, the city proper, too. Things were quiet for a while after the slave revolt, but the Lord suddenly imposed a major tax increase about six months ago, which has resulted in a significant number of people unable to afford living in the city. To put it simply, the Iron Feast is squeezing even tighter than ever, and as a result, there's been a huge influx of people into the slums. You know how tight things are already, don't you? What do you suppose happens when you have limited resources and space, and suddenly twice as many people vying for their share? People have started trying to take to stake out their territory, and they're fighting hard to defend it. People are mugging and rubbing each other over scraps. It's a mess. I... I had no idea. Huh, not many thieves speak makeshift graveyard as their marks after all. Though, in this case, I actually think your being so isolated is probably to your benefit. But in any event, me and the rest of the gang have formed a band of peacekeepers of sorts. Peacekeepers? Is that not a city guard's job? The guards have never given a damn about the slum. Why waste manpower on people who can't even pay their taxes? As far as the Lord and his men are concerned, we're just leeching off his land. We're damn lucky he doesn't make an active effort to chase us all out. That means it's our responsibility to protect ourselves. I see. So you're training to use a sword, as a part of this band of peacekeepers. In short, yeah. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting? In what way? Give me the ointment. Huh? I'm not done with your... What's even left? You've done more than enough. Now give it to me. Here. Roll up your sleeve. You're not going to put it on me, are you? Like I said, I don't need... How many times have I told you the exact same thing? And how many times have you listened to me? This is a payback for all the time you refuse to listen to me. You can't argue with that, can you? No. I guess I can't. What are you smirking about? Nothing. Ah. Try to keep this sort of thing to a minimum, if you would. Huh? Why would I want to limit my training time? I need to be prepared for whatever might come our way. That madman of a lord could be scheming to send his soldiers in as we speak. I'm sure there are other more suited for the job. You don't seem like you would be especially adept with a blade. Hey, don't judge my skill at, by my appearance. I'll have you know, I'm the second strongest member of the gang. Oh yes, that's very reassuring. You're on fire today, huh? Since you seem to have forgotten, I put up a damn decent fight against the Lord during the... God, what the hell is wrong with me? Why am I digging up some of our most painful memories for a cheap drag? Hmm. Anyway, you get the idea. I'm pretty good with a sword, so you don't have you don't need to worry about me. I see. And out of curiosity, who's the strongest member? Probably Gretchen. Excuse me? Why would she ask me to fa to my face to give her the name of the one man stronger than me? It's not a difficult question. Ah, 
Some asshole named Gresham. Yep. Interesting. Well, I hope he remains number one and you stay number two forever. <laughs> <laughs> God, really? Uh, and why exactly would you want that? The whole reason I'm training so hard is, the guy, is so I can suppress Gretchen and she wants me to stay below him? Unbelievable. I get it. It's easier for you to look down on me if there's someone who can put me in my place for you. That isn't why. No? Well then, mind telling me why? The strongest member of the group is the one who stands on the front lines. What's your point? The most qualified person heads the charge, yes. I don't see anything wrong with that. It puts them at greater risk. Oh, it turned wholesome. Wait, are you... Are you concerned for my safety? It's not you I'm concerned about. Your death will simply make life more difficult for the girls at the brothel. Pfft. <laughs> well, would you look at that? You, worried about me. I guess even you have a soft spot or two. Oh, for heaven's sake. I already told you. That's not why I... I'm all done. Thanks. Now, I assume you're finished with your business here, so feel free to make yourself scarce. No need to be so rude. Or, do you have some ulterior motive for wanting me gone? For one, it's impossible for the dead to rest in peace with you around. Maybe try thinking about the living first, for once. I never really cared for how much important people, put, how much importance people put on showing respect for the dead. It's all seemed so pointless to me. Your blasphemy knows no ends, does it? When your time comes, you're going to find yourself with no one to grieve over your loss. Fine with me. People are only worth their salt while they're alive. And what about the afterlife? Who's got time to think about the next life when you live in an overcrowded slum where someone might kill you one day for, for a couple of coins? All the more reasons to take it into consideration. The consequences one action in life have on the next should serve as to encourage us to always do what is right. Not sure I buy that. I'm done with this conversation. I don't think there is any getting through that thick skull of yours. I, uh... If I find offended you, I apologize. I didn't mean to. Say, Morgano. Would you mind humming that song you're so fond of for me? What? Where did that came come from? I'm in a good mood today. And what better way to improve a good day than with good music? I do not follow that line of reasoning one bit. Why should I have to sing to make you feel better? What's the big deal? It doesn't hurt anyone. If you have even half a heart, you'll do this tiny little favor for me. Yes, because trying to manipulate me is a wonderful way to make you <laughs> to make me want to do anything for you. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. That was mean of me. Please? That doesn't sound very sincere. But fine, I'll do it. Facing away from me, Morgana dropped to the grassy ground, staring off into the distance and beginning to hum. It wasn't a hymn or a requiem for the dead, but a folk song the girls at the brothel would sometimes sing. No one seemed to know who had written it though. The lyrics were slightly vulgar and people were supposed to clap and hoot along with the music, but Morgana only hummed the melody, leaving the rest out of that out. In isolation and snug with her voice, it became a thing of beauty. It was pure, untainted by the filthiness of the slums. Un unobscured by the crudeness of the people who normally sang it. In many ways, it was hard to believe they were the same song. This felt like it was hers. Like it existed soullessly, soullessly, uh, soullessly, to be heard in her voice. Listening to her sing, I sprawled out on the grass. Ah, oh, what a beautiful image. The blue sky spread out above me as far as the eye could see, and as I, grazed, as I gazed up into it, all my problems seemed to fade away. That I lived in a dirty slum, that the Lord was digging his claws even deeper into the city. 
that I was in the middle of a makeshift graveyard for those who had no one else. It all just disappeared. I, all, I felt almost as though I had ascended to heaven. The first time I heard Morgana sing was, if memory served approximately a year earlier. At the time, <clears throat> she was still completely walled off, much like she had been when I first brought her to the slums. She always kept her eyes on her feet, and she spoke in a soft voice, frequently pausing. She was wary of everyone, including me. One day, I went to put ointment on her face, and she shouted, roared, practically, for me not to touch her. To be honest, it was somewhat aggravating. Another, I asked her about a father, and she just pointed up at the sky and saying, he's up there, which I took to mean he was dead. So I dropped the subject and got back to applying ointment to her. At some point, I started humming the song, which I had picked up from the girls. And upon hearing that, she told me she was quite fond of it. And then she began singing. Immediately, I find myself entranced by her voice. Though she was always spoke in soft, muffled tones, her singing voice was incredibly clear. Like I was listening to a chorus of angels. Of course, the moment I put that thought into words, it'll lose all, p all of its point potency. It'll just turn into some loser cheap pickup line. It really is something though. If she told me her voice could raise the dead, I would be inclined to believe it. It's just that beautiful. While it was true, Morgana could be difficult and wasn't the most affable. I knew that, at heart, she was a sensitive and compassionate girl. That she would come to this graveyard every day and pray for peace for all the forgotten souls was more than enough proof of that. Though she surrounded herself with high walls, she was probably the kindest, most loving person I knew. And that was what drew me to her. It didn't matter that anyone said what anyone said about her, how quick they were to judge her as ugly or standoffish. I knew they were all wrong. It would be wonderful if I could just spend the rest of my days listening to her sing. Damn, it's so good. Are you asleep? I'm awake. I was just resting my eyes. Oh. And I was about to accuse you of being boorish for having the audacity to ask me to sing and then fall asleep. The fact that you were almost upset seems to suggest that you want to be heard, despite how much you <laughs> protested, protested it. No, I simply... Oh, I've got a perfect idea. We can build a makeshift stage at the pub and have you sing for everyone. What? Don't worry, it'll be fine. You can wear a mask if you don't want anyone to see your face. You don't even have to get on stage if you'd rather not. You can just sing from behind a curtain. Who knows, you could end up being a big hit. Come on. Come all, hear the soothing song of the enigmatic siren. Absolutely not. No? I think it's a pretty good idea myself. Oh, it's because you don't like taking other people's money? I wasn't planning on charging. I just thought it would be nice if more people could hear. As I already said, absolutely not. And if you push the issue any further, I'll never sing for you again. Noted. Forget I said anything. Seemed like a good opportunity to get her interacting with more people, but I guess not. Such a pretty voice is wasted on just me. What? You look like you have something else to say. Nope. Not a thing. Well, I'm not going to first her if she is opposed to it. Say, Morgano. There's something I've been wondering for a while now. Question mark? You've never actually called me by my name, have you? And where did that come from? I've just been thinking about it, and I can't recall a single time you've done it the more than two years we've known to each other. Don't tell me you've forgotten my name. Are you kidding me? I remember it, yes. I don't like that emphasis on remember. Is it really that big of a deal? There's rarely ever, ever anyone else around, so it's not like you don't know when I'm talking to you. Besides, besides, I'm, I'm planning to leave when I get older, so I don't see much point in getting very attached to anyone. Do you have any destination in mind? 
No, not yet. Why are you thinking so far ahead then? You're 11 years old. You still got few years before you're old enough to be independent. And you're going to spend that whole time keeping everyone at arm's length? I just think maybe it's about time you took down some of those walls. Might take a little weight off your shoulders in the process. I'm not going to say you have to though. Anyway, I should head out. I've got <coughs> work to do. Try not to stay out here too late, okay? I'll be leaving as soon as you're gone. I could walk you back then. I can make it back fine on my own, thank you. As you wish. Hey, Morgano. I thought you were leaving. One day, I'll show you the world. I said it again. Oh, God. It's painful. It's painful. Do you ever get tired of saying that? You gotta think big dream. The world's changing all around us. A life just fighting to make it day to day is hardly a life at all. I, I don't want to spend the rest of my days confined to this tiny little corner of the world. Well, try not to let your dreams grow so big they crush you. I'm sure I'll be fine. I'll just have you sing for me if it ever gets to be overwhelming. Why would I be there? Why wouldn't you? It's hard to show you the world if I don't bring you with me. Knowing you, you still won't know where you want to go. So I'll be I'll bring you with me. We can find a place for you together. Pretty good deal, huh? Oh. I don't need to see the world. All I want is Huh? What was that? Nothing. Now I'm even more curious. It's nothing, really. Now go on. Shoo. <laughs> fine, fine. See you later. Ah. Uh. What you wanted to say? Doesn't he ever get tired of chasing me down day after day? I thought as I watched him walk off. Quite honestly, I didn't understand that man one bit. Apparently, a lot of people respected him, and he seemed to have a fairly large social circle as well. I couldn't fathom why someone like him would go out of his way to spend time with me. It wasn't for lack of people to talk to, and it certainly wasn't because we got along. Never mind my face, which couldn't be pleasant for anyone to be subjected to for any amount of time. Would he go so far out of simple pity? Hopefully, he doesn't have any clearer motives. At long last, your face is healed. I spent enough money on you to build a house, and you're going to pay me back tenfold. Now go forth, Morgana. Work. Be the greatest whore this brother has ever seen. <laughs> nah, nah, he's not gonna say that. He's probably not that devious. Enough foolish speculation. It's going to start getting dark soon. I should head back. The brothel was always rather quiet at this time of day. The girls worked at night, so they were generally asleep while the sun was out. And it was my job to take care of cleaning, laundry, and preparing meals while they rested. When I first arrived here, everything seemed so filthy. And while I still felt that way to a degree, nights, when they were open for business, were still miserable. I wasn't quite so prejudiced against the girls themselves anymore. They were kind to me. Treated me like a sister, or tried to at least. I kept them at a distance though. I didn't so overtly spurn them as I had before, but as the holy daughter of God, I could not form familiar relationships with the prostitutes. I could not delight in being pampered by them. My unwillingness to open up probably disheartened them, but still, they did not throw me out or lash back at me for it, and no one made any remarks about my face. As prostitutes, they frequently caught all sorts of diseases. In my more than two years there, several had even passed away. One had gotten hives all over her bodies, transforming from fairly pretty to absolutely hideous in only few days' time. And they had seen considerably more than me, so they had no reason to comment on a girl with a little flesh missing from her face. Which wasn't to say everyone was sympathetic for me. I should get, I should get a fire started. I had taken care of most of the cleaning before leaving for the cemetery, so my next act was preparing food for the day. 
Supplies had been scanned of late, which meant today was making uh, I was making yet another watery vegetable soup. All right, he mentioned crime was on the rise. That would explain the trouble getting supplies. And here I am, completely oblivious to what's going on outside. From time to time, I would catch one of the girls saying, often with an uncomfortable laugh, she's still the same old Morgano. But personally, I felt as though I had changed quite a bit since arriving here. No longer being in strength. Um, in. Wow, that's a difficult word. Uh, intrinsically uh, disgusted by prostitute where it was big enough, but even more significantly. How pathetic. I had become astute aware of how much. <clears throat> I've become astutely aware of how much I was on the receiving end of others' generosity. Before coming here, the thought would have never even occurred to me. I was always the giver of generosity. The saint everyone, men, women, and child alike, came for help. I hadn't to hold anyone to what I was, though, so I didn't get any of that special treatment, and perhaps that was the part of what had allowed me to change. Of course, because I kept all that tightly locked up inside, the only thing people saw was an aloof little girl. Finally, the coal is lit. Now to add a tinder. Oh my god. Oh, it's starting? The bandits? Oh god. What? Who's that? And who shouts knock knock instead of knocking? Everyone else is asleep, so I can't just hope for someone else to deal with it. But someone's going to wake up eventually if she keeps yelling. But everyone's exhausted and need a rest. Oh, for heaven's sake, quiet down here. Oh no, it's just a random girl? Who's that? Ah, finally, someone. Ah! What? What are you screaming for? Are, are you okay? Huh? Why wouldn't I be? I'm rather more concerned about you myself. Your face. Look at your face. Ah, right. My face. It just... I heard it treated the girls good here. You can be... What? Maybe 10 years old? And look at you. Huh? Unbelievable. What kind of terrible man would... A little girl like you then make you his and give you all his nasty diseases. Does she think I'm a prostitute? Hold on, please. You're jumping to conclusions. Don't you worry. You've got a friend in me. No, that's not what... There's still hope. Tomorrow will be a better day. I'm not. Ah, it's not the cause of disease then. Yes, thank you. Finally. No one gave me any disease. You're being tortured. What? Now that I get a closer look at you, your hands are all torn up too. Do they really bust out the whip that often here? No one whip? Ah, I can't believe my eyes. Who would do this to such a little girl? Uh, excuse me. I'll have to give the man in charge here a stern I'm talking to. It's his job to protect his girl. Excuse me. Knock, knock. Shut up and listen to me. Ouch. Ah, I didn't mean to do that. Oh, Father, I pray for your forgiveness, for I have disobeyed your teaching and written my hand against my fellow men. Uh, nothing for me, the one who actually got kicked? Uh, I'm... <laughs> oh my god. Before you do anything, you could perhaps introduce yourself. I like the music. Kinda uppity. Ah, that's what I get for jumping into conclusions. I've always had this super bad habit of letting my imagination run wild, you see? Soon as I saw you, I was like, dark, dank dungeons. A little girl hung upside down, buck naked, a big smirking, shirtless man holding a cat on nine tails. The girl screams, echoing on the cold stone. Will she live to see another day? That sort of thing. Huh. It keeps going, too. Next, a dashing young man appears to rescue the girl, but she's, but he's secretly... Shut your mouth for me, would you? Aye, aye. You're allowed to breathe. Ah, my god, who, who is that? Okay, so, uh, what was your name? Cern, spelt Cern. That's Jer, like Jester, and Ran. 
Like Ransom. Wait, is it Jern? Like Jester and Ran, like Ransom. So it's Jern? This thing, shut your mouth for me, would you? I. But you are allowed to breathe. I. God, it's way too early for that shit. What is it like? Noon? One? Should I have not let her in? Oh, nah, you're fine. I've known we were getting a new girl for the, for a few days now. I just... Well, I wasn't sure... I, I sure wasn't expecting this. Hmm. Huh. You don't have to keep your mouth shut permanently. If you have something to say, spit it out. So this is the... So is this the part where I get fired before I even started? Ah... Uh, Tell me something, would you? Do you act that around your clients? What? Is there something wrong with how I act? Moving on. Stand right there for me. And for the love of all that is holy, hold still. Yes, ma'am. So what you gonna do? Just hush and hold still. Oh, no. Oh, there, there is plenty of animation in this version as well. Uh, you're staring holes into me, through me. Just a little more. Aye. Ah, you're getting real close and personal there. Need to make sure you're up to par. Par with what? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, is this necessary? Hmm, hmm, hmm. Hello? Alright, at ease. You passed, you're hired. Really sweet. So, what was uh, all that about? You gotta have an exam first, obviously. I see. I'll tell you this, though. If you weren't cute at all, as all hell, I'd have thrown you right out on your ass. Ah, am I really that cute? Ha, ah, you're making me blush. You realize that wasn't a compliment, right? Anyway, just start work tomorrow. Today, familiarize yourself with the rules and the layout of the place. Aye, aye, ma'am. Morgana, can I ask you to show her around? What? Uh, alright. Thanks a bunch. Much obliged. I'm already beginning to regret this. Talk about culture shock, though. I've never seen a place with a woman manager. Oh, yeah, I'm not a manager. Just an old hat. Huh, huh. So where's the big boss hiding, then? No boss here. Just us girls. What? You don't have a manager? Really? Nope. You'll find that this is more like a community than anything. A bunch of girls with nowhere else to go who banded together and built up the place. And it's been going like that for more than a decade now. From what I've, to I've been told, it started just as a shack, a little shack, didn't even have proper flooring. But by the time I showed up, the facilities were a little nicer. The roof still licked like a bitch though. And we didn't have nearly as many rooms set up as we do now. But we worked our tails off and over the years, scrounging together the money and time to patch it up and grow it into what you see now. Ah, neato. Of course, not having someone spe specifically in charge of running the place does come with its own set of challenges. Does it? Sounds like a pretty good deal to me. Everyone gets to do their own thing. It's not that simple, unfortunately. Makes it more difficult to iron things out with the community and other businesses when trouble arises. And of course, it means we have no one financing us. So every day is a struggle to make it to the next. Any day could be our last. It could all come down, cr it could come crashing down. Toss out any any illusions of job security. Not so neato. I'm still super duper immersed, impressed though. Major major props. You guys made this one heck of a place for the slum. Yeah, I suppose. I'll take that, I guess. You don't sound very happy about it. Well, I mean, pretty much everyone who founded this place is dead now. It's one of the risks of the job. You work your ass off just to add another day and end up taking three off in the process. So, once you've got enough to do whatever it is you need to do, you walk out the door and never come back, got it? Whether you've got to debt to pay off or friends or family who needs a little extra money, once you're done, be done. You're not gonna ask what I need the money for? If a girl looks like trouble, I'll talk to her and have some guys look into it. But you? 
you don't strike me as a type. If you were up to no good, I feel like it'd be pretty obvious. Besides, I've been in this business long enough to know it's not at the top of most girl dream jobs list. Most of us have been through some nasty shit and we don't come here to have another to have other people digging around through it. Boss. Huh? Boss? What? You're sweet, thoughtful, and heck of a boss. So I'ma call you boss. It's perfect. I I thought I told you we don't have a boss here. Boss. Well, now I'm in taking a liking to me, I guess. Anyway, I'm gonna go crash again. Morgana can answer any question you've got. Aye aye. Also, hmm? Any more hollering while I'm trying to sleep, and I'll rip that pretty little head of your shoulders and shove it between your legs, got it? Yes, boss. <laughs> she gave her a stern talking to. Alright, Morgana, lead the way. Uh, sure. Before we go, though, I have a question. Are you incapable of speaking like a human being? What do you mean? Does it really require exclamation? Oh, I get it. We're friends now, so I don't have to talk so stiff-like. <laughs> Wait, what? You call that stiff? Yeah, why? Though, to tell you the truth, I've kind of forgotten how to talk casual. Guess that's just what happens when everyone around you so beats cheese. I'm very respectful of my seniors, I'll have you know. This conversation is going nowhere, so let's go. Aye. So, you've got here a couple years back? Neat. You're gonna start working here once your face all clears up? I have no intentions of becoming a prostitute, no. And Maria's already said she will respect that. Instead, I'm tasked to other chores, such as cooking and cleaning, in order to earn my keep. Oh, huh. Maria's even more generous than I thought. Generous? Most places wouldn't look after a sick girl for that long. Let alone give her room of her own and buy her ointment. The ointment is his doing, technically speaking, but I suppose she's right. You're right. I've begun to feel the same way recently. Taking care of a few chores cannot possibly counterbalance the burden my being here, <clears throat> my being here places on everyone else. They would surely be all be better off without me. Whoa, that's not what I meant at all. Sure, maybe it doesn't balance out. They're letting you stay out of here out of kind, the kindness of their heart. But that don't mean you'd be better off elsewhere, that you're not pulling your weight. You've been here for all of, what, an hour? How can you possibly know all that? Just look at this place. It's better looking than a lot of places outside the slum. And it's you who's been keeping it so clean, Morgana. The last place I was, it was dirtier than a bare bunghole. But this? This is like heaven compared to that. Without you around, Morgana, the girls wouldn't be able to sleep so comfortably. Huh, per perhaps. Ah, uh, are you blushing? You're blushing, aren't you? It's nothing to be ashamed of. You can even jump into my arms if you want. You know. Huh? You're incredibly obnoxious. My, my heart. <laughs> For a second there, she almost had me feeling a little better about myself, but then went right out the window. Mm. So you came here a couple of years back. That would have been right around when the Lord Slaves revolted, yeah? Mm. Yes, right about then. I wish I could have been there for it. I bet it was all sort of crazy. You mean you weren't around when it happened? Nope. I wasn't in these parts till all about a year or so ago. So I've only heard the story. Back when the uprising happened, I wasn't even in this country. I was way, way far away. Yeah, she seemed, I was about to say it, she seemed like she was from a foreign land. Obviously dressed all different and looks different. I see, so you only moved here recently then. Nah, I didn't move. I was kidnapped. What? What? I'm a bit of an airhead, if you haven't noticed. One day, I was some, just suddenly taken captive, and then I got sold off. What? Really? Yep. She was taken captive and sold off. I didn't mishear her, did I? You, you talk about it like it's just part of your daily routine. Hmm. Well, it is the second time it's happened. What? 
Oh my days. It it is? Okay, back to tour then, shall we? Ugh. What? That raises even more questions. Oof. Oh yeah, I've been thinking about what I want to call you, Morgana. What do you want to call me? Is that not what my name is for? Nicknames. Step one to making friends, duh. So from now on, I'm gonna call you Morgs. Mo Morgs. And with a hard G, not a soft one, so there's no confusion. Thank you. I would have never figured it out without your help. Morgs. Can you not call me that? It rather gets on my nerves. You can call me Jerry. You can't be serious. <laughs> Good heavens, I cannot keep with up with this girl. Anyway, that about covers it. All that's left to show you is the storeroom. Weren't we just there? Yes, but there's a second one. Below us. Below the floor? I made my way to the corner of the room, crouching down and pulling up on the one of the floorboards. From beneath it appeared a staircase leading downward. Ooh, underground storage. Nice and cool to keep things fresh too. This room serves as a second purpose though. It's also a shelter for us to hide in any sort of trouble arise. Hmm. Fortunately, it has not been used for this perp for that purpose. But we're not in the safest area, so we must prepare for anything. Ah, yeah, that makes sense. Nice place that is. This is. I guess it's still in the slum. Indeed. Here's hoping we don't ever have to use it. Indeed. So that's everything then. I've seen the whole place. Yes, that's everything. Or I suppose I should show you the kitchen as. Ah, what's up? I completely forgot I was trying to start a fire. Ah man, she's burning down the house. Also, I have a feeling this new girl is an agent. Just because they now spoke about the hiding place, it makes me think that she might be an agent and that's why the bandits robbed the whorehouse. Which was also been spoken of in the first game, because they didn't really know why the bandits decided to even s steal from this place. It was fairly uncommon. So, it must be the place. She must be a scout for them. I'm guessing. I'm only guessing. Like, I have no idea. I scrambled back to the kitchen, but as I had feared, it was too late. It was far too late. The coals were long since dead. All that work for nothing. Looks like you got a bit of an airhead side too, Mori. And who do you think is to blame for that? It's alright, we can get it lit together. Together? This is all your responsibility. <laughs> As the sun began to set and meal preparations were complete, the girls started to emerge from their rooms, a bustle forming in and around the kitchen. Some sluggishly rubbed the sleep from their eyes while others ca complained about clients. Some took a moment for me to recognize in their casual clothes, sans makeup. Off the job and being themselves, they looked less like prostitutes and more like just ordinary girls. There were around 10 girls who actually stayed at a brothel and another 10 or so who came in to work from outside. It was a fairly large scale operation, at least to my eyes. Though there were a couple of other smaller brothels in the slums, this was the one everyone directed anyone interested to first. Girls with nowhere else to, to go stayed here, and girls who did have a place to go back to stayed there. No one actually owned their own homes though. They either lived with a man or shared a place with a few other girls. None of them had husbands or children. Supposedly, there were those who didn't in the line of work, but it was rather uncommon. I scooped up serving of soup from the cauldron sitting over the fire, dishing it out to girls as they came by. No one gave me any unpleasant looks at the sight of my face. They said, good morning and smiled. Just like any other day. I whispered a greeting to each of them in turn, but given how noisy the kitchen was, it was unlikely any of them heard it. Oh boy, it sure is bouncing in here. I like me a place with some energy. Um, glad to hear it. That. It didn't take long for Stern, uh, for Jern to start hitting it off with the other prostitutes. Her perky disposition was undeniably overdone, but everyone seemed to enjoy the positive attention she was giving them all enough. They were giving them well enough. 
In almost no time at all, the girls were fawning over her. She's like a puppy. Once everyone had their food, they settled into their individual mealtime activities. The bland, watery soup was exceptionally unpopular, even though everyone knew there was nothing that could be done about it. This again, several of them murmured, to which Maria stood up and chastised them, saying, You should be grateful you've got anything to eat at all. I, I know, I know. And we're gonna work her butt off to make it for you. It's rude to complain. I'm sorry, I really am. It ain't her cooking I'm complaining about. You know that, right? Don't you, Morgana? It doesn't bother me. And you're perfectly justified in being displeased. It's hardly nutritious enough to get you through the day. True enough, I guess. Would be great if we could get something with a little more oomph. Like a big old slab of meat. Oui, I love meat. Just thinking about it had me drooling. Meat, meat, bring on the meat. Save that rule for work, because that's the only meat you'll get. <laughs> God, I, I really hoped there would be a joke about that. But I also kind of wish that it had that. Thank you, Maria. I wonder, maybe I can pretend this root-looking thing is meat, and, I'll actually, and it'll actually taste like it. Meat from the depths. I summon thee. Meat. Chomp chomp. Nope, still no meat. No shit, genius. Meat. You don't like meat, Moritz? No, no, you won't grow up to be big and strong if you're such a picky eater. I'm not picky about what I eat, no. All sustenance is a gift from God to men. I would never refuse his... Barnier, oh, it's starting. Oh God, well, well. Is the meat not to your liking then, Saint? Oh no, it's just like... Uh, a memory, a flashback. Hear that, slave? The saint says your butter tastes so bad it makes her wretch. Uh, I gotta remember that. Ah. You are right, Morris? You're super pale. I'm, I'm just fine. It's been more than two years and I still can't get the taste out of my mouth. No matter how hard I try to forget it. Sometimes when I'm awake, like just now. And sometimes an awful as a night as an awful nightmare. If you're not feeling good, maybe you should lay down. I'm fine, really. You sure? Maybe meat's out of the question, but some bread would sure be nice at least. God, yes, bread. Too bad supplies have been so scarce lately. It's all that damn lord fault. Not that bunch of whores can do fuck all about it. Is the lord really that bad of a guy? Alright, you haven't been here very long. You don't know what he's like. Yes, he's a terrible man. He oppresses his people and rejects the word of God. He's a cruel, heartless, barbaric madman. He deserves the strictest of judgments. So does everyone in the city hate him, then. I doubt you will find a single person who thinks otherwise. Huh. Well, I hope he stops doing being the Lord soon, then. What do you mean? Uh, I just mean it'd be nice if someone else could take over for him. Then he could just be a regular old guy. He wouldn't have to worry about running the city stuff. Everyone's wins. It would be nice, yes, but... Wouldn't it? Pretty dang brilliant, aren't I? Even I know it's not that simple and I'm <laughs> only 11. How would a bunch of slum dwellers even begin to, in to uh, instate in the new lord? Does she even think before speaking? Hey, Jacobo. Well, damn, I was hoping to make it before breakfast time. Sorry about that, but I brought bread. Oh, bread? Speak of the bloody devil. Here, here, toss it here. No, me first. Patience, please, you're acting like wild animals that haven't eaten in days. Ha, look at you, Jacobo. You've got girls fawning all over you. Don't just watch, help. And it's not time, it's not me they're after, it's the bread. Touche. That said, pretty sorry ba batch you got for, to for us today. You could probably crack someone's head open with this. There there's no hope for the world if we're fallen so far that girls are tripping over each other to get their hands on this. You want fresh, soft bread? Well, start saving your coins. And I'll tell them, this is the best we can get. 
let it soak in your soup for a bit. That should soften up some. Though you should be grateful to have it all to have it at all. Ha! Huh. How much longer until I fall into a pile of till I fall into a pile of money? Morgs, it's a man. There's a man here. I have eyes. Thank you very much. Who is it? Do you know? Ooh, is he a client? No, he's not. He's more, uh, how should I put it? Someone who doesn't know how to keep his nose out of other people's business. Excuse me, did your eyes fail to detect that I have ears? Ah, uh, here he comes. Haven't seen you around here before. New girl? You first, mister. Who are you? Since you came in through the back door, I'm guessing you work here? Something like that. Holy moly, I've never seen a male prostitute before. You, me, outside, now. Oh, talk about aggressive. Inner office romance never ends well, you know. Maria will get really mad if she finds out. This ship's sinking before it even leaves the port. Two prostitutes in the thrones of forbidden love until one day an older client finds out and goes mad with rage. All of a sudden, there's a knife in his hand. He swings and... Maria, what the hell is wrong with this new girl? I've never seen anyone with this much air inside their head. Jacopo is getting angry again. Classic. Oh, that's, uh... Jern. She joined today. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing it. I'll learn it later. She's a bit of a <laughs> off in the head, but she's a nice girl. I'm sure you'll get on just fine. Nice to meet you. Wait, does that mean we have the boss approval? It's crazy enough that they're running this place themselves, but to allow, no, cheer on a sinking ship, this place is out of this world. We just met five minutes ago, though. So how about we start as friends? Shut up and listen to me for a second, chatterbox. Until I say otherwise, you are not to speak another word. You will listen to every last word I say and carve it into that empty skull of yours. Understood? Aye. And there you have it. I assist with the brothel operations, nothing more. I presume you've been told about how this place doesn't have a formal manager, so sometimes situation arises for a man to be present to be is necessary. Yep, yep. He may not look like he may look like a squirrely dork, but he's actually surprisingly useful. Was that really unnecessary? Sorry, my bad. Slip of the tongue. Ah, Nito. So you two known each other a long time? You seem like you're pretty close. It was pretty much just the two of us fighting to survive for years. That's awesome. I love that kind of thing. Together through thick and thin. Not too long ago, he and some other guys started up a band of peacekeepers. So he's spending more of his time training up with them these days. That said, I guess it's not too bad knowing we've got someone we can throw at troublemakers if need be. Ooh, peacekeepers. Sweet. You don't look like you'd put much of a fight, though, mister. You want to test that theory? Maria, you need to teach this girl some damn manners. We'll be drowning in complaints if she treats Patreon like this. Ah, I'll have you know, I butter my clients up so much they're big, slippery mess when I'm done with them. I'll be just fine, I promise. Ooh, I bet they'll get slippery, but not from butter. What? That, that's not what I meant, I swear. What you're getting all flustered for. You're a whore just like the rest of us. On a somewhat rela related subject, where exactly did you pick up some of the mannerism? Huh? Why do you ask? I seem to pretty normal to me. It would be quicker to list the things about you that are normal than aren't. Huh. There's actually a majority huge story behind that. Majorly a huge story behind that. Oh? Is that so? And what would that be? You weren't raised by wolf in the wilderness and never learned how to behave like a normal person, were you? You're not too far off, actually. When I was younger... Wait, wait, you don't have to. No one's forcing you to say anything if you don't want to. I didn't grow up with my parents. I lived with a bunch of really nice men and I learned a lot from them. I didn't even know my name until they told me. Pardon? I thought my name was... Me. Until, uh, until I was around five, but then one of the nice men told me it was actually Jern. He was super duper disappointed in me. 
called me the dumbest brat I've ever <laughs> I've ever known. Talk about rude. But it kind of rubbed off on me, so that's probably what you're seeing. Oh. Well, that certainly is a story. It's not that good enough for you. I'll I'll just say the nice man was absolutely right. How rude. It's genuinely concerning how stupid this girl is. Anyway, food time. And that is all for today's video. And I know this one is slightly shorter than the rest, but it's actually really, really late right now as I'm recording this. And I want to focus on tomorrow because I have a feeling something pretty big is about to happen. Probably the brothel being raided as we already know it's bound to happen and I, i'm pretty sure this new girl is actually related to this i think she did some scouting because why would morgana i mean we see we saw morgana tell her about the hiding place where you know they're supposed to hide whenever something bad happens and i think that was kind of a you know a clue to what about to, to go down right that she's kind of a agent she's doing some scouting maybe giving information to the bandits but I guess we'll have to wait and see. Probably we'll see that tomorrow. I'm not really sure because I don't know how the pace is going to go. But if it will happen, I'm going to cry. Even though I know what's about to happen. And ah, damn, it's going to be so unfortunate. But we have to wait for tomorrow and see. But other than that, we had a pretty great episode until now. We've seen Jacopo and Morgana getting even closer. Which is always amazing. I'm so glad I decided to pick this game up and you guys telling me to do so. And cannot wait to continue. But yeah, that's all for now. So thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll catch you on the next one.